I'm Crystal Faulkner with the CPA and Business Advisory Firm of Cooney, Faulkner & Stevens. We're here today with Phil Castellini. Phil's the Chief Operating Officer of the Cincinnati Reds. And Phil, opening day, opening afternoon, I guess I should say, is right around the corner. It's got to be almost like Christmas Eve for you. Yeah, this is a big week. But before the Thursday opening game, there's actually another game, a showcase game that's occurring on Tuesday. Maybe you can share what that's all about. Yeah, you know, we decided to bring kind of the last uh, of spring training back to Cincinnati from Arizona. So we're going to play a futures game where our minor league guys will play against our major league team in an exhibition game, seven innings. But it's going to start with a batting practice, kind of an interactive batting practice where the players will be mic'd up and, and really uh, giving the fans a taste of what their pregame warm-ups are like. You'll be able to meet and get autographs from the minor league guys uh, on the concourse. And then uh, we should have a great game and see what these guys uh, have because, you know, the pipeline of our minor league players is so important to a team of, of our size in this market. And this is Tuesday. Tuesday night. And if folks want information about how they can attend that game, they can... Reds.com. Reds Reds Gates will open at 5 o'clock. Game will be at 7. So as I mentioned, the opening event, the grand hoopla, I guess, is Thursday afternoon. It's 4-10. Right. Yeah. It's a sellout, but it's still going to be pretty exciting. And there's all kinds of events that lead up to the opening day. Yeah, opening day in Cincinnati. There, there's no bigger opening day in baseball than Cincinnati. And, you know, the, the tradition really comes from us being the first team and it used to be the first game and years and years ago we lost that privilege to you know there was an ESPN Sunday night game and now as you know they just were in Japan doing exhibition games as well so we're, we're no longer the first game but certainly we've we've retained the right to have opening day at home every time which is which is a very uh, uh, good thing to have relevant to all Major League Baseball and it's an exciting day and then opening night is actually Saturday night and there's a lot of pretty interesting and exciting things happening there. Yeah, Rusty Griswolds will be there uh, playing um, both before and after the game, fireworks night. You'll get to see the players in the fan zone. They parade around and, and let people take pictures and that kind of thing. We've got uh, Joss Hutcherson is going to turn uh, throughout the first pitch and um, it's it's a pretty exciting night. You know, he's in one of the biggest movies out there right now, so we're know. great to have it's great to have him in the house. I've got a 16-year-old. She's all over that. So. Yeah, and we're Kroger calendar giveaway for the first 20,000 fans. And opening nights become a, a big tradition here for us as well. And we're excited to have another big night for Saturday. Well, Phil, just I'm just so thrilled for you and congratulations and go Reds. And we're going to continue this conversation with, with Phil Castellini on WCPO.com. Phil, in addition to just the wonderful air about the whole region. I mean, people get so excited, it's like a holiday in our city. There's a huge economic impact that the Reds brings to our region. Maybe you can share us the results of a study that the Reds... Yeah, you know, uh, UC's conducted a couple different studies on the economic impact of, of the team, and uh, most recently the updated study uh, showed about 300 to 319 million a year in economic impact for the Reds. And with the banks coming on uh, board now, I think you're going to see even more of that. It's, a, it's becoming more of a destination location. I think the city in general, and, and I think the RTN does such a great job promoting all that Cincinnati has to offer in the CVB more and more. The World Choir Games mm -hmm. is an example of their work and getting more conventions here. So I think the, the, the culmination of all that activity and effort is, is really great for our region. And as I mentioned earlier, so you are the chief operating officer of the Reds. You run the business side of the operation. I have to ask you, in your wildest dreams when you were a child, did you ever imagine that you would grow up and be running business for the Cincinnati Reds? No, uh, not, not in a million years. I had a lot of other things that I thought I wanted to do uh, uh, back in those days, you know, just like every other little kid, maybe astronaut, fireman, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, no, it it's really has been a, a, a a dream job so to speak and you know what's most interesting about it crystal is we come to the job and the responsibility we've we view our running the reds as a stewardship more than an ownership right this is the community's team this is team belongs to a, a you know greater cincinnati what we call reds country which is really about a 150 mile radius region of four different states um you, you mentioned huntington earlier and 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 so uh, the way we look at it we're fans first mm -hmm. right so we want to win that's why we're here uh, that's what the fans want. And, and what we're really excited about is there's an energy and a bonding in the community around this team again, something unlike we've seen in a long time. It feels good. It's true. You know, when I was a child, you mentioned I am from Huntington, West Virginia, and I can remember so vividly on every Sunday afternoon being on my grandmother or grandfather's porch in his swing listening to the Reds on radio. And it just becomes such a, a tradition for so many people in our community, not just here in Cincinnati, but as you mentioned, the entire 
150 mile radius region. Yeah, our Reds radio network um, has grown from uh, about 44 stations to over 90 stations now, and it's a critically important part of how we ma uh, market this team regionally. And so those stations, like the ones you listen to in Huntington, are incredibly important to us, as well as WLW, the flagship. But what, what's also happening there? Crystal is they're helping us market not just airing the games mm -hmm. they're promoting our activities they're they're uh, if we give them content they're airing it in the morning in a drive time and so it's really helping build that Reds nation Reds country spirit which really helps our overall region having the Reds here in our community is just an another wonderful aspect of greater Cincinnati yeah there's no question and we really promote we've got all kinds of strategic partnerships we're involved with uh, both the CVB and the RTN uh, you know so promote coming to Cincinnati for a Reds game but go to the museums go to the Freedom Center go to the uh, you know um, go to the zoo aquarium Kings Island you know uh, museum center there's just so many great things to do here art museum um, that it makes a great weekend there's a lot to do and it's not just about the sports it's about everything the city has to offer you know, Phil, I know you mentioned that on Tuesday is your showcase. It's a brand new event this year where the, uh, the major league players will be pe playing the minor league. Right. Uh, what other new activities, other new features can fans expect when they go to the Reds game? Well, I tell you, you know, we are always trying to improve the team on the field, and we're always trying to improve the fan experience. So the couple of new things for this year, we have all new digital menu boards throughout all the concession stands. So that's kind of high tech in the place up a little bit. We've, we've done that over the years changing old tube TVs out with flat screens so you'll see more of that in the concession stands and a couple of new video walls um, as well throughout the ballpark and uh, the biggest changes though that you'll see especially for fans with kids we've done a renovation of the fan zone and brought in a, a little mini kids field made out of uh, fake turf and we've built a clubhouse for our Reds Heads Kids Club our Reds Heads Kids Club is now over 10,000 members strong and so they have a clubhouse to come and check in on game days and uh, we've also moved the main stage and, and reprogrammed a uh, group tent out by the uh, smoker concession stand and kind of now it has more of the wooded look of a party barn. It's going to be a really special place. Uh, and I tell you again, with a guy with a lot of kids, you're, you're, trying to, you're, you're, you're trying to be at a game and the kids get antsy. And so this is a great place to go let them blow off some steam. And like we, uh, what, what we try to convince the parents of is blow some steam off in the fan zone so you can stick around for the rest of the game. Well, Phil, thanks so much for being my guest and for everything you do for our community. Well, thanks for having me. Go Reds. And go Reds. <laughs>